praise the Lord. Yes. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. It's always good to come and praise God yes. for what he's done for you today. Yes. Done for you throughout your life. Yes. You know, that, that's one thing that really uh, has been on my heart is to never forget what God has done for you. Right. Never forget that. I think that's what causes people to get discouraged mm-hmm. when they think, well, God can't do it. Well, you know, we got to take the can off because we know God can. We know God is more than able to do above what you can even think about. You know, that that's what's so awesome is, you know, when you ask God for prayer, you know, ask him for something like a job or whatever request it may be. Uh And and he gives you a better job than you can even imagine. You know, I, I often since I teach school and one of the things I often tell the students is that opportunities create opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know, you just start moving forward and you see what God can do. Yeah. You know, when I was little, they say, you make one step, God makes two. Yeah. You know, and it's so many times that's the way it is, that God opens doors. You know, because yes. when God opens, can't no man shut it. Yeah. You know, and it's, well, I, I don't have the education, I don't have this. You know, to God, you know what he said? Okay, you don't have the education, I'll make it so that you can get an education. Right. You know, that, that's one of the things I was never able to do, finish my education. I had to end up working. Uh, I've been my, my sophomore in college, and Dad got sick, and I ended up um, having to quit and work uh, full-time to help support the family. And I thought, you know, God, one of these days I'd like to finish the education. And all those years later, now I'm teaching at the college, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, it, it was like God said, just, you know, just hang on because your motives are right. Because, you know, that's what I love about God the most. He looks at your heart. Yeah. The man looks on the outside, right. you know, and but God looks on the heart. Yeah. That's why we should never tell anybody that they'll never amount to nothing. Right. I know I say I know I say that a lot up here, but I, like I tell you, I, I deal with, with with students and I deal with individuals that throughout the course of life, I'm always amazed mm-hmm. that somebody. I mean, we're talking. It, it could have been a kindergarten teacher, could have been a grandma, could have been that they never told them that God had a plan for their life. Never told them their life was valuable. And now they're 50 years old. And then somebody else comes along and said, I believe in you. I've never heard that. I've never had anybody that say they believed in me. And I'm thinking, man, I I mean, I'm thinking, you know, from this this little up, you know, that nobody said that. Nobody prayed with you. You know how that is so important. I tell you what, kids will remember, you know, a lot of times through the summer you have uh, Bible Bible uh, camps and stuff like that. But I tell you, those old songs, I know I mentioned before, Jesus loved me, this I know, yes. for the Bible tells me so. That little rhyme that you sing, you know, and you sing over and over and over again, it's amazing how that comes back to you mm-hmm. at those times you need it the most. Mm-hmm. When you get so discouraged, you know, and you think you can't go on, and you hear that voice, you hear that little song, yes. Jesus loves me, yes. this I know. Not just because this person said it. Not because that person said it. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. And and often I say, you know, I I, I never got saved reading Little Abner. You know, I I never did read Peanuts. You know, I never got saved. Even though sometimes there's some Christian elements in some of that stuff, but I never did. But boy, this book right here, this changed everything. When I read it, you know, when, when, when God says, I love you with an everlasting love, yeah. I think, wow, everlasting love yeah. never quits. Yeah. I tell you what, you start reading this to your kids at bedtime. Yeah. You know, you read them bedtime stories, you pray with them. You know what is so powerful? I know my girls, one, one time, you know, I, I asked them what they remember most about, you know, uh, growing up. And I used to come up here in Des Moines and, and, uh, uh, and spend time with them. And on Sunday morning, a lot of times we go down by the river, Des Moines River, and we have a Bible study, just us three, mm-hmm. you know, and, and we would pray mm-hmm. and we'd read God's word. You know, that's what they remember most. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not about the clothes you buy and, and all this other stuff. They remember that time when you can share God's word with somebody right. that can change their life, to transform their life. Right. They'll remember, right. you know, because the best thing you can tell somebody, you know what? God loves you. Yeah. And we was talking about it. The myth and I was just talking about it, the difference between religion and Christianity. Mm-hmm. 
the difference between religion, a lot of time religion wants you to straighten up and get your life right and then, then come, you know, and then come into church. And just, but the difference between Christianity is Jesus says come as you are, just as you are. Right. You know, you think about the woman, woman at the well. Right. I'll, I'm always fascinated about her, you know, because when she came, they, they didn't talk, you know, the Samaritans and well, they didn't talk to each other, right. you know. But you know what? Jesus is more concerned about the heart than the reputation around. Right. Yeah. You know, a lot of times he says, well, I don't know if I should talk to that person. You know, they're, they're, they're not my type of person. Jesus, what he's talking about, he, he understood. Right. He understood one thing. That was a soul. Mm -hmm. That was a person that needed their life changed. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's so fascinating that, that after they had their conversation, she left the water pot that she came out to get water mm -hmm. and ran back into the city and she started a revival. Hallelujah. Oh. Well, she, she didn't have evangelism explosion. Yeah. She didn't have all those programs. That's she didn't have the road, Roman road map. She yeah. didn't have none of that stuff. She knew one thing. Yeah. Jesus, this is yeah. him. Yeah. This is him. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's where it starts at. Right. He understood this is him. Right. You know, Jesus asked Peter, who do they say that I am? He said, I know you are. Right. You know? You're the son of God. You're the Messiah. You're the one that's sent. He understood that. Yeah. You know, Peter had some issues. You know, Peter was always kind of one of those that speak up and uh -huh. need to think first. But yeah. but you know what? Peter understood one thing. You know, when he denied him, that, that's always a fascinating story in the Bible. You know, Jesus said he was going to deny him three times, you know, and, and he did. But, you know, and, and one of the Gospels says, it's really fascinating, after the cock crew, mm -hmm. right, Jesus looked at him. You ever know how he, and he always wondered, how did Jesus look at him? You know, uh, some people give you that evil eye. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. Give that out to yeah. get the evil eye. Yeah. But he, he, you know, it's looked like, you can tell, because Jesus is so compassionate. Oh, Peter. Yeah. Oh, Peter, I still love you. Yeah. And you realize through the rest of the gospel, when, when, when Jesus was resurrected and came back, you never hear one time he brought that up. He never brought that up in his face. Isn't that something? Yeah. He never brought, well, Peter, I don't really appreciate you acting like that. Yeah. He never did bring it up. Right. You know, and, and when God forgives you, yeah. and, you get, and, and he casts you in the sea of forgetfulness, yeah. Yeah. he expects, he ain't going to bring it up, uh -huh. and he expects you not to bring it up. Yeah. Right. You know, and I'll tell you what, sometimes we are one, worst enemy, yeah. you know, because we keep bringing up old stuff, yeah. old stuff, yeah. old stuff. Yeah. Let me tell you something, you know, the past, I said, we can't go back and grab that. The only thing the past is good for, remember what we used to be, right. not, not what we are now, right. but remember what we used to be. Right. And that's tonight, as, as we go into service tonight, remember where God brought you from. Yeah. Never forget that. We're going to use that word never tonight, because I'm going to talk about it tonight, right. a little later on. But you know what? We don't need to ever bring up what happened yesterday. Because God is a present God. Yes, he He's a present help right now. Yes. That, that's important. Yes. You remember when, when Jesus was walking on the water and told Peter to come? You know, well, Peter did. He stepped out of the boat and he walked. And we know what happened. He began to sing because he thought, I can't be doing this. You know? <laughs> but who was he walking to? That, that's the pastor. Who was he walking to? He was walking to Jesus and he began to sing. Now, Peter cried out, save me, you know, save me. Then that's a prayer that needs to be answered, like, right now, right? Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. But I, I thought about that, and I used to speak, but I said, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus is the resurrection. Yeah. You uh, remember, Lazarus is dead four days. Uh, so Peter still had hope, even if he went down. Yeah. He was still going up because he had Jesus there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we're gonna we're gonna open this up. We're gonna remember Pastor uh, uh, tonight. We're gonna remember him uh, doing some dental work. Yep. And uh, if you've ever been to dentist, you know, yeah. it's, it's not, I, if you're if you if you enjoy yourself going to dentist, I don't know. Yeah. There's somebody stuff when they use hooks and <laughs> hooks and them saws and stuff in your mouth and ask you to talk, you can't talk. Your bottom lip's hanging down here, you know, and, and all that stuff. It, it's not the most fun experience. Yeah. You, you're worn out. We're going to remember Pastor tonight. We're going to remember, remember him. And, uh, yes, my
That's right. Amen. Amen. That's absolutely. The look, look toward the Lord. You know, he can pray. He, he's a miracle worker. You know, you know, I, I, I that's one thing I, I found that, you know, when when you ask God and, and he moves. And there's so many times you see in the Bible that God just wants you to trust him. OK. Now, you think about the co-creator, you know, that tells the stars, you know, when, when you think about it, creating the stars and said, you know what? You stay there until I tell you otherwise. Right? Sun, you're going to keep coming up until I tell you otherwise. You're going to set. You're going to rise. The moon's going to come out. Now, think about that. The creator that does all this and created you and was weaving you before you was even in your mom's belly and had a plan for your life, think he can't take care of the needs that you have? You know? Yeah, we, we do. We worry too much about bills or all that stuff, you know? And, and I don't know if we can get this paid. I don't know. You know, it's, it's time for us to stop saying, I don't know. And, and, and start saying, I can yes. do all yes. things in Christ that strengthen yes. me. And that's where God wants us to be. Yes. We can do it. We can pray to him. Yes. You can pray to the creator. Yes. You know, I mean, you know, he used to say those things. That he can make a way out of no way. And that's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Okay. Someone else. Prayer request. Prayer request of praise. I uh, ask you to be with the, the boy's mom's, uh, my son's mom. They, uh, she had to have an MRI. Uh, we prayed for her earlier this year, and uh, she has to have an MRI. She had an MRI today, and they're going to find what caused the, the blood and, the, and things going down through her neck because they, they never did find what caused that, and she could have one of those spells again. So, so uh, she did take a test today, and they're going to give her the results. And, and uh, you know, it was big because that, that, that day that that happened, I kept getting texts on my phone from my boys, you know, pray for mom, pray for mom, pray for mom, and, and you know, and I, and I was touched that they knew I prayed. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, you know, you're only going to go to people that really pray. I mean, you can yeah. put prayer requests, but you want to get somebody that can get a hold of God. Uh -huh. You know, and, and it, it was touching me that they knew that we were going to pray, and I'm going to bring it to the church. Yeah. I'm going to bring it to the church because you want praying people that when you go to, and that, that is one good thing about Facebook, I'll say. Yeah. There's some things that are not good, but there's some things good. Yeah. When you put them prayer requests yeah. out there, there are people that are genuinely going to pray yeah, for you, yeah. you know, and they, they send those prayers, praying now, praying now, or right. sent prayers up, because they, they understand everybody has needs. Someone yeah. else? Yes. yes. I got over here, please. Uh, I'll come back to you. Yes. Annie from San Diego. She's in Navajo, uh, down in the Navajo land, and uh, has cancer, mm. and so uh, we need to pray for that, and then uh, Deborah Roberts. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray tonight. Because that, that, you know, God is more than able. I am the God that healeth thee. You know, God is more than able. And, and we can claim that. We can claim that in Christ. Yes. Well, mental issues, 
definitely going to pray, you know, pray for those situations, because, you know, w when the Prince of Peace resides there, I mean, that makes a difference, you know. Yeah. yeah every, everybody don't live under God's, you know, God, yeah. God's way of doing things, you know, and, and there's a lot of things to steer, but we can call on him, you know, to come and bring that Prince of Peace. I tell you, one of the best things that, that, I, that I'm able to do, and I, I love getting to work early, because there's nobody there, you know, it's quiet. But I tell you what, when you pray over that place and walk through there, it's amazing the peace that resides there. You know, it's not it's not a place that's out out of bounds anyway. But it's just it's just I just found if I go through and pray and believe God and have all His angels there, I mean it's amazing the difference how the days go. I didn't used to do that in the classroom, and sometimes you get a few attitudes, but I, I start doing that, and it's amazing the difference. I mean, the difference in the trust, the difference individuals will share with you because they, they know the peace of God rests on you and they they feel free to share and you can pray. That is powerful. Right. You know, that they they, they they sense that, that they oh, I, I can be safe with that person and share because he's not going to blab it all over everywhere because, you know, we want to take it right to the throne room. Right. That, that's where it wants to go so it can be handled. Right. You know, so hallelujah. Yes. You know, remember that creator. You know, when you when you you, you can get a young person, and just I mean, it's great to get saved at any age. Yeah. But you know, you get somebody that's 10, 12, 14 years old, and they and live to be 80 or 90. Look how many lives they can touch, touch along the way. Because I'm telling you, there there's a lot of people hungry for the gospel because they, they need something that's gonna last. You know, because sometimes you know you got social programs, you got other things. 
but sometimes people need something that will stick with them through the, all the ups and downs. The life has ups and downs, but to have something that they can grab hold to, you know, because one thing, Jesus is never going to leave you. That, that's one thing about it. Because, you know, you may have friends today, and they may be gone tomorrow, and they have some attitude with you or something. But to know that one sticker closer than a brother, yeah. that one's always there for you, that, that to me is just something that's really been big. I, I had a preacher one time say, Tim, always preach what's big in your heart. You know, always preach that. And that's absolutely true. And what's big is that God wants us to know that he's there, yeah. that he's there, and he's a constant God. Yeah. You know, he, he's not, you know, the thing about it, you know, I never get a picture, and I kind of share this this Sunday. I never, ever get a picture, you know, it's like Isaiah saw, saw God high and lifted up, right. you know, his train filled. Ten. So you, you get a picture of that holiness. I never do get a picture of confusion in heaven. I never do get a picture of that. You get an image. I get a picture of peace. You know, they got this tranquility. That hey, you know what? All we ask them down there is that they just believe. We, we got it covered. There's nothing we don't know, you know. I, I, I mean, think about it. In the beginning, God. Why did the Bible start in the beginning, God? You know, it doesn't start once upon a time. So it's not a fairy tale. You know, the, you know, it started in the beginning, God. How far back? Somebody asked me, how far back? Well, how far back did the beginning go? You know, God always was there. And that's something for us to always remember. Think about the creator that far back. And yet he knew you. He already looked through time and he knew you. That, that is so powerful. That he knew you. He knows your personality. There's nothing that surprises God. And some people think, well, well, didn't God know that was going to go on? Or I was going to lose my job or this. He's always ahead. He's always ahead. There's not a surprise. He said, oh, no, all I ask you, one thing. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. That's what God's asking. Trust me. Do you trust me? Even if it's hard. I, Dr. Jane Dawson wrote that book years ago. When God doesn't make sense, and and I had and I had a they gave me a copy of it on books on tape when I was driving down the road, and I said it's absolutely true. Sometimes it will not make sense, and you know people ask me about well I don't understand this. I said well, I'll tell you what, heaven's the only place with all the answers. Right. That's it. Right. Down here you may never get the answer, right. but I can go up there. And I can ask a lot of questions. Yeah. You know my job down here is just to trust God, yeah. just to believe right. that hey okay God. You know best. You know, it shows come on, Father knows best. And, you know, got cable, it comes on again. But we know the real Father yeah. knows best. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, we want to uh, go ahead and stand up for prayer then. And, and, and if you don't have to stand up.
Thank you all for praying. And as we kind of wrap up these requests with Father God, just uh, be with our pastor, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Be with the dentist because we understand, hallelujah, the pain, Lord, that you would be with our pastor, Lord. Hallelujah. Be with Cindy's situation, Lord. Father, get to mingle this cancer and Deborah, the mindset. And, and thank we pray for Carol and Sheila and Mike and Dad, the job situation, Ellen. Uh, no, all, all these situations that we have, you are more than able. Oh, I keep seeing that. You are more than able. We look to you, the one that created heaven and earth, the one that can change a circumstance. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It's all about you, God. It's all about you. It's not about us. It's about you. Hallelujah. And we can come boldly to the throne. We can come boldly to the throne of grace because the, the, the veil was rent. And we can walk right in there boldly. And we can go to you, the Father. That, Lord, it's all about you. It's all about you. All that, that just keeps coming up. It's all about you. And, Father God, as we praise you tonight, as we go into this worship time, that, Lord, we realize one thing. That, Lord, you love us. You care about us. You're the wonderful Father. Hallelujah. Our mighty counselor. Hallelujah. Father God, Emmanuel, God with us. Oh, as we sing that song, come let us adore you. Lord, we're going to adore you tonight. We're going to lift you up tonight. The Bible said, if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. And Lord, we thank you tonight. We praise you tonight. Father God, Father God, you're above all God. The King of kings, the Lord of lords. How majestic is your name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father God, thank you so much. We praise you. We give you the glory and the praise in your wonderful holy name. In your wonderful holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Cell phones, just remember to uh, turn them down and to turn them off and don't vibrate. Uh, financial peace uh, seminar we're going to have here at the church, Abundant Life. If you're interested, it will be up on the uh, website. Roberto's going to be with us. So if you have any questions, you can contact him. All right. Offering. Uh, Brother Ron and Tope, uh, would you come up and do the offering for us tonight? And we'll go into worship. Brother Tope, would you pray tonight, please? Would you pray? Over it, Lord, we're thankful, God, that you're here tonight. Be with your people. Praise, praise, honor, and glory to you, Brother God. Lord, each and every day we thank you and give you glory, God. It's wisdom and knowledge to share your word in this world. All those in need, Lord, they're out there by the hundreds and thousands. They didn't give anything. Just let us do our part in helping sharing you, Lord, in this world. Now, God, we just ask you to be with us, pray with us, and Lord, we ask you to bless us out of me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Halleluja. <coughs> see God's face. <coughs> Sorry. To see God's face. You know, to imagine you can be seated. To see God's face. To see what he has done for you. One of the things as it was back there. One of, one of my favorite songs, uh, Sandy Patty did sing this years ago. You know, turn your eyes upon Jesus. You know, look full into his face. Just, just imagine. You know how the song starts, Oh, so are you worried in trouble? No light in the darkness you see. There's a light for, look at the Savior, a life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full into his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim. Strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. Or us sin no more have dominion, for more than conquerors we are. Hallelujah. <clears throat> his word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Hallelujah. And that refrain, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. <clears throat> that, just, that song we was talking about, seeing God's face, that song just came up. See, it's nice to have a smartphone to <laughs> pull stuff up quick. <clears throat> but one of the things, when I was asked to do this, and, and it's, it's never an issue with me because you always got something to say, what God has done in your life. <clears throat> and the psalm, this is my life verse. It's been my life verse for years. I got other ones. But this was given to me early on. And it's Psalms 3725. And... You got different translations. The NIV says, and this was David talking. <clears throat> now David lived 70 years. So he had a long span that he knew to trust God. There were some times he kind of wavered in some of the things he did. But to think that he wrote this, he said, I was young and now I'm old, yet have I never seen the rights forsaken or their children begging bread. That's the NIV. <clears throat> now I grew up on the King James. Since I've been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Now let's take a look at this for a minute. This verse has got me through more stuff. Oh, I've got to turn this on now. Here. Good. I see the sign back there. <laughs> That's all right. Y'all heard me here. Come here. But, yeah. But, you know, I was young and now I'm old, yet have I never, never, and I like to look up words, never seen the rights forsaken or the children begging bread. Never. Just think about that 70-year lifespan. Now, you know, you, you can look up a lot of words and there's different ways they, they, they uh, comment on it. But I like this, this, I look this up, and I like the word never, the way they, they describe it. At no time in the past or future or on no occasion, not ever. Boy, I mean, that brings it right down to the road. Not ever. Okay? Now, sometimes <clears throat> that, that's what we have to look at. And let's look at the balance word forsaken. means abandoned or deserted. Now, this is never seen the righteous forsaken. Not one time. Now, that's what we really have to always remember. You know, God's not going to forsake us. Right. And, and the things we kind of get into is sometimes that we want things a certain way. And if we just learn to trust him, because the Bible says his ways are higher above our ways. Right. You know, we, we think we want this, but God can give you that, and he can give you something better. Yeah. You know, sometimes we don't really need to be settled for Christians. You know, I'll just settle for this. And God says, man, I'm willing to give you this. Yeah. Don't you understand that? You know, when, when we got our, when I got our uh, Chevy Equinox, that's the way it was. I was driving home after night drive, and, uh, and, uh, and the Lord spoke to him, it's time to get another car. And I said, well, Lord, this ain't that old. I mean, we got it in 2012. It was new, and I thank God for that. He says, no, it's time to get, get you a, another car. And I'm thinking, well, 
you know, I, I, I just surrender to it. Yeah. Well, that that week, I ended up getting a flyer about this certain car, and it was the Chevy Equinox. So well, let's go down and check it out. You know, it was Greg Young down there, and we went down and checked it out, and, and we prayed before we went. Yeah. And you know what? When you pray first, see, that, that's the thing. We kind of get that turned around. We, we want to do what we want to do, and we go ahead and do it, and we ask God to bless it afterward. It doesn't work that way. Sometimes it turns into a big mess. Yeah. You know, instead of saying, hey, God, should I do this or should I not do this? Should I go to this employer or not this employer? Right. E even if you just shop at a, shop at a store yeah. or even where you get gas at. We was getting, we was, uh, um, was Sunday? Was it Sunday? We was coming over here. We was getting gas at, well, after church and went and got some gas one. And it was amazing. We went and got gas because it's kind of cheaper on this side of town. And we was going to get it. And there was a guy standing there. And, you know, he kind of locked eyes and he came on and he needed some help. And I got to thinking about that. You know what? We could stop at any quick trip in town. Yeah. Really. I mean, you know, we go by them every day. But so we waited until that particular quick trip. That guy was there, you know. And, and, and I'm thinking, you know, you know, God brings you those divine appointments. Now, we can pray for the needs of that young man. You know, I don't know why. He, he kind of went on about some stuff, you know. Pray for you. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you too. I'll pray for you. And I tell you what, that's powerful. May never see him again, but I could see him in glory. See, that's the thing. You know, you, you don't know how far your prayers get sometimes. You don't know. I was thinking about the other day, I was thinking about a lady, her name was Leafy Blair. And I probably told some of this story before, but Leafy Blair was a lady in our church when I went to Kingsway Cathedral years ago. And, and I needed a job back in the 80s. And they said, Tim, you need to go to Leafy Blair. And she was an older lady. She was probably 80 years old. And the only thing she did was pray for people. She didn't sing in the choir. She didn't do anything. But she, she would pray for you. And she was an older lady. So I went to her and introduced me. And, and she, you know, older folks, they like to call you young man. I do that now, too. But <laughs> they like to call you young man, you know. And, and, and she said, young man, what do you need me to do? She says, man, I would like you to pray for a job. I need a job to provide for my family. And she had the biggest blue eyes, gray hair. She's a tall lady. And she said, okay, let's pray right now. Uh -huh. See, I love that. She didn't put it off. Uh -huh. She didn't say, I'll go home and pray. Let's pray right now. And she, she said, reach out your hand. And she grabbed my hand. She had a grip. I don't know what she, she might have been a pro wrestler in her early years. <laughs> I don't know, man. She grabbed my hand. I thought she got cracked the bones in it. But, you know. <laughs> She grabbed my hand, and Father God bless him. I mean, she was loud, and she was right now, God. <clears throat> and I remember Leafy Blair. And you know what? I've never been out of work, and that's the early 80s since then. Amen. Never been out of work. Ended up getting better and better and better jobs. And I thank God for that. <clears throat> that's what it takes. Somebody serious enough to get hold of God. See, D David understood a lot of things. Even when he messed up and, and he did a lot of things wrong, he knew where to come back to, yes. and that's where it is. That's why it's so important with your kids. You know, we talk a lot about our kids that, you know what, I know, you know, y'all make the sit, but, you know, there's always a place you can come home to. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing about it, we're going to be real with what's going on. I mean, it's not just you can come back here and everything's going to be the same. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about decisions. See, that's the way we go approach God, and, and it's good that we can come to him, but you know what? You know, God's a reverent God, and we approach him. And the one thing I love about God is we can approach him, and I tell you what, it's, it's just like somebody you can bear your heart to. That's what I love, like the woman that was, what, what, the, the woman that, you know, had the issue of blood, you know, and you got all this crowd. I've been in football. Y'all been in football games where you got 60,000 people, but there's something different. When somebody reaches out, you know, sometimes people rub up against you, you know, just going through the crowd. But when somebody's reaching for you, you know the difference. Yeah. When somebody's trying to get your attention yeah. and somebody grabs, you know, Jesus, the hem of his garment, because she pressed through there. <clears throat> if I could just touch the hem of his yeah. garment, I don't care. You know, the issue of blood probably didn't smell very good. And she spent all of her money. Right. It was like, I got to get to Jesus. If I could just get to him, I know I could be healed. Yeah. And she pushed through the crowd. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. Sometimes we let the crowd stop us. Yeah. 
You know, we just think about blind bar mess, you know, and that crowd. Well, who's coming? I hear this crowd. You know, I can't see him. I hear this crowd. Well, it's Jesus, you know. Jesus, oh, man, son of David, that's him. That, oh, shh, you know, let, let, let's don't say nothing. You know, don't, 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 don't disrupt. I tell you what, I'm going to disrupt some things when it comes to get a hold of God. That's what we need to do a lot of times, get a hold of God. You know, those people, I tell you, those people that are willing to pray and get down and believe God, when, when Jesus said in Matthew 28, 20, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. That's what we got to believe. That's what we got to come in our life and believe what God said. You either believe God's word or you don't. You know, it's not a halfway. You know, one, one thing about it <coughs> that uh, I, I was looking up, Lo, I am with you always. And, and Barnes notes on the Bible, I kind of look up some of them, and he says, Lo, I'm with you. That is, by my spirit, my providence, providence means to protect the care of God, my attending counsel, guidance, I will strengthen, assist, and direct you. That's what we always got to realize where God is at. You know, he's our mighty counselor. You want somebody to give you direction? I know people reach out and they call these you know, 800 numbers, and they got all these things, you know, and they, they try to get guidance. Let's get on our knees and ask God. See, sometimes we don't want to ask God because he might say no. You know, I, 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 re, I remember years ago, uh, uh, before I was in a relationship, I, I went out to my daughter, lived out in Philadelphia, and I went to a church, her church, and, and I was single at the time. I went to the church, and the pastor did not know this, you know, he might have known I was coming, but he didn't know what to preach on to reach me. He was just preaching. And, he, and he's talking about singles. He said, you know, if you're single and you want, you want somebody to come in your life, the first thing when you meet them, you should ask God to show you their heart. Show you their heart, what's really in there. I thought, wow, how easy is that? <clears throat> to show them, ask God. But what happens is, you know, you kind of like that person. You start dating, and then you kind of get farther in the relationship. Then you ask God, you know. Now your heart's kind of already tied up in there when God can say, no, you know what? It, it's, it's just not the good fit fit for you. See, I got somebody for you that would be a good fit. Because one, one of the Bible translations about a, about a helper, you know, that's suitable for you, one of them translated as teammate, and I love that. I, I think that's really a good translation. You're not a helper, that teammate. You know, somebody that's going to be with you through thick and thin. Somebody that's going to stand beside you. And, and to think about that, that, to have two couple, two people that love each other and, and God is the center, what, what a threefold blessing right there. When God is the middle of it. You know, and I had to learn that, that I had previous relationships, didn't always understand that. But when God is the center of your life, you know, it, it's, just, it's just about the foundations. We think about the foundations when Jesus was talking about the one built on sand and then the one built on rock. Well, I remember <clears throat> years ago, but down there in Burlington, southeast Iowa, they put the new bridge in. They had an old toll bridge. Wooden, it was a, 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 just a metal frame bridge, old bridge. And they start building a new one, and they had the old one part beside it. And, and they, they was taking these, they had these out there in the water, they had these big old uh, shovels and stuff, and they was driving these pylons, the, the steel, down into the bedrock. And you could hear it for miles. We used to, <clears throat> when I worked for Walmart, we drove our trucks, and you could hear that pounding, I mean, for miles away. Boom! Yeah. Boom! And they was driving it down in there because they expected that bridge to last 100 years. Mm -hmm. You know, but you could just, it was constant, that constant bang and bang and bang and bang. I said, that's it. That's it. They took the time to lay that foundation deep because I tell you what, that'll make a difference because the winds blew. You know, when we look in that scripture, the winds blew, the rains came. It was the same circumstance, but one built on sand and the other one built on rock. And that's what God wants us to do. You know, we, we ought to be mighty oaks. That's what the Bible describes as mighty oaks to be able to stand. You know, and that's the problem now. We kind of get swayed back and forth. But you know what? God is looking for people that says, you know what? Will you stand with me? We got that one song, Will You Ride With Me? Yeah. I love that. Peter sings that a lot of times. Yeah. And, and, and Psalms 31, 6, it says, in Deuteronomy, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 31, 6, this is a new living translation. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. 
For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. That's really where we have to come. God's going to go before you. See, we always got to remember that, that God has already gone before you. He knows what you need. He's already prepared a way. Because, you know, we, 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 we look at this and talk about most of but, 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 but I always look at the Red Sea experience. That was so powerful. They've already seen a, a lot of miracles, you know, in Egypt. But here they come, you know, with a million people, a million and a half or two million. But, you know, they're coming with their carts and their animals and their kids, and, and they're coming. Now they're up against the Red Sea. Now that looked impossible because coming behind them, they see the dust of the Egyptians coming after them. And they see this Red Sea up there, so they're yelling to Moses. You know, hey, Moses, what are you supposed to do? You bring us out here to get us all wiped out, you know? And he, Moses cries up, and the Lord says, tell them, go forward. They'll see the salvation. They'll see me move. You know, I didn't bring them this far. There used to be a song. I didn't bring you this far just to leave you. You know, don't, don't, you, don't you think I could take care of this? Yeah. And, and can you imagine just standing there, and all of a sudden, you know, it stops flowing, and it just stands up one side and stands up the other. And you got this wall, you know, and, and the thing about it, if you've seen a creek bed or something, you know, start drying up, it's still muddy. It's still pretty muddy. But, you know, they went across by, in dry land. Yeah. They went across. Now, you think about bringing your carts and everything across there, and every single one of them got across. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Not, not part of them got across. Not a few of them got across. Every single one. Yeah. Right? And he said, you're going to see the Egyptians no more. And they all got across, okay? Now, some of them had to go across and touch the water on the way, you know? I'm sure they did reach out. They, hey, what's it? do a little wave there. Hey, that's, you know, wow, this is God. There's no way they could not know that was God. How could they not know that God did that? Who else is going to do that? Stop this, stop this here, and I can go and try land. Who else would have done that? Right? And that's what you got to realize in your life. When you know it's God, well, I, I had a, 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 a friend of mine, and I know I probably talked about it, but he had a, I, I was talking to some friends because this was such an impressive day. He, he was a, a, he worked at, call them loss prevention, but they was guards at, at, at Walmart, <clears throat> and he had a heart problem, and he had to eventually got a heart transplant. And one thing, I remember him coming into Walmart with his wife, and he was so sickly, if his wife wasn't holding him up, he would have fell over. He had an oxygen tank, and, you know, and it goes up in his nose, that, you know, and he, he looked so sickly, and I said hi to him. He could barely get high out, you know, and, and, and he ended up going to Mayo Clinic, and they gave him a new heart. Now, I didn't see him. I'd heard that he'd gotten, you know, it was now it's probably a year and a half, you know, two years, but I, I went back, and he, and he came back, and he started working for the store as a greeter, and I came in there, and I saw him. Oh, and I said, I was just so happy to see him. He looked good. I mean, his face was shining. I said, how you doing? And this, I'll never forget this. I said, how you doing? And this is what he did. He looked down, and he raised his hand up. That's how he did it. I understood. He didn't have to say a whole bunch of stuff. He looked down and raised that hand up. He understood. He understood that. And that's what we got to understand. He understood who gave him that heart. There was other people on the list, but he got a chance to live. What a testimony. Yeah. I tell you what, when God does something for you, yeah. when God opens that door, you ought to praise him. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, that's Psalm 34, 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His yeah. praise shall continually be in my mouth. What does it say? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. It doesn't say my complaints. Right. It doesn't say that. I mean, Americans, let me tell you, you know, we are so blessed. We are really so blessed. You, yeah. you think about what we had. I mean, just as hot as it's been to have air condition, yeah. you know. Now, I work outside, so I was in and out, in and out today. But, uh, you know, you get back in the truck and you got that air conditioning going. Yeah. But you remember when you did, you would go to church and you had the stick fan, you know. Yeah. You had the stick fan uh -huh. with the people praying on it, you know. And, and we, we, had, we didn't have air, so they, they'd open the windows. Yeah. And bees fly in there. They think you, hallelujah, you know, you think you're saying hallelujah. We try to get away from the bees. That's what we try to do. They slide it out the door. But, you, but you know, you, you had that. That's what we had. But you know what? We understood one thing. 
we was listening to God's word. All right? So it was a little uncomfortable. But, you know, to listen to God's word, because every day, Reverend Butler, every single Sunday, unless it's something unusual, he gave an altar call every single Sunday. Every single Sunday. He always wore a robe, and he'd come down there. Will you come? Will you come? Do you want to accept Jesus in your life? Do you want to change? Will you? I can see him to this day. And one day, I walked that aisle. And you know what? I never regretted it. Amen. You know, only, only regret, I didn't do it sooner. Yeah. That's the only regret. Yeah. I, I wish I'd done it sooner. And I was the only kid that walked up there. I didn't go in the group. I walked up there because I knew God was pulling me. Yeah. And God saying, you know what, Tim? I got a plan for your life. You know, I'm going to give you a future and a hope. Yeah. All I ask is you walk with me. Right. The Bible says, for with God, yeah. all things are possible. Yeah. Jesus says what? Come follow me. <clears throat> what does follow mean? That means somebody's leading you, yeah. right? Yeah. Come follow me. And that is so powerful just to remember that. That's what God is saying today. Will you follow him? You know, we, we sing that song, you know, like I'll, I'll follow the Lord, have thine own way. We know we sing at a lot of churches, have that on the way. And the preacher said, do not sing that song unless you mean it. Come on. Don't just be singing that song to sing along with everybody. Sing along with Mitch, you know. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be just singing it. You ought to mean that. When we would say, soul say yes, you ought to mean that. God, tell you what, God's never going to lead you wrong. If he asks you to do something, you know, people say, well, Tim, I, how do I know it's not the devil or somebody talking to him? I said, they're really seriously. You think the devil cares about anybody? You know, does he really want you to go over and pray for somebody? Or he really wants you to take some bread over to somebody's house? You know, or give them clothes or whatever? You think he really wants to do that? He don't care about them, you know, but God cares. Yes. And that may make a difference in the life. I tell you what, I've learned, I've learned one thing. And God said, you know, hey, Tim, you need to call this person. You know, you need to send them a message. You know what I've learned to do? Do it. Because they might not be there the next time. You know, and, and when God puts somebody on your heart to pray for, you know what you need to do? You pray for them. What I love about the miss is she understands that. Yeah. She really understands that. You know, I, I was, I, God really blessed me with her because one thing about it, she just goes to God. I've never seen anybody get more prayers answered than her. But you know, you don't have to talk King James language. You know, you don't have to do all this. You just have to be honest with God. You know, because he seeketh such to worship him in spirit and in truth. That's where it's got to start at, in truth. You know, if, if, if things aren't going the way, just go to God in truth. I can handle that. Yeah. You know, because I tell you what, God, you know, when we, when we really speak out to God, now I'm instructor. Now, some of you may not know me, but the ones that know, the one thing about it, take driver's ed and multiply it with a 40-ton vehicle. That's what I do. Okay, I, I teach semis, all right? Now, I'll tell you what, you know, it could. It, it could be some exciting moments, let me tell you. You, know, you can imagine. But you know what? The biggest thing I found out is the calmer the instructor is, the calmer the student is. The more excited the instructor is, I'll tell you, the more excited the student is, and I don't need him to get excited or hurt. I need him to realize that, you know what? This person over here has been through this. See, the one thing about it, I never forget when I, when I teach driving, I, I never forget this. I was new once. I never forget that because that always keeps me grounded and realize I'm trying to teach them. But they know that I know I've, I've, been, I've been where you're at. You haven't done anything I haven't done. I've already been there. But I'm going to show you the way to go. I'm going to show you how to do it right. Jesus is saying the same thing. Would you come follow me? Yeah. I'm going to lead you right. Mm -hmm. All I ask you to do is trust me. Right. Yeah. Just trust me. See, that's the biggest thing. When he came down here as a baby, you know, and, and he went through, you know, the, you know, we, the two years old, three year olds, four year olds, and all that stuff. He went through those years. And you think about the one thing about the one thing about Jesus was that he can say, I understood. I understood how it feels to be rejected. I, I understood how it feels misunderstood. But you know what? I, I want to tell you something. I came for you. Yeah. That's who I came for. They used to sing a song that when, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. You know, I, I think it's so powerful. And, 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 and I'm going to close with this, but I love the fact, how did Jesus die on the cross like this? Isn't that powerful? 
It's like, come welcome me. My mom, if I hadn't seen her for a while, and I went down there one day, and she was older. She was, I was the youngest of the family, and she was older when she had me. And I pulled up, hadn't been home for a while, and she ran at me. You know, I got out of my bed, and this older lady, and, and she ran at me. And you know how she ran at me? Like this. My son, that's how she, this is so vulnerable. I mean, it really, there's no protection whatsoever. She ran at me like this. And I'm thinking, how powerful is that? You know, come here, come here. You know, and, and, and to spend that time, I was, we was driving in the truck, and I saw an older lady that was sitting on the front porch, and she was dressed like my mom, and that just memory came back. And sometimes you just wish, man, you just wish you could talk to your mom one more time. You know, you wish you could spend that time with her and say, Mom, I love you, you know, and just to spend that time. Well, I can't, I can't talk physically with my mom anymore, but I can look forward to one day spending forever with her, you know, that one day you never have to be apart. And you know what? And the only way to get there is through Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father God, we want to thank you tonight. We want to thank you tonight because you are God. Yes, that you are more than able to turn those situations around in our life. Yes. There's one thing about us. Let us remember that you will never forsake us. You will never leave us. That you love us with an everlasting love. Yes. Oh, Father God, let us never forget that. Yes. That you won't abandon us. That you won't leave us. Mm -hmm. Father God, in the beginning, God. And in Revelation, it says, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. It's almost like a bookcase. If we stay in the middle, we'll be all right. Because we know that you will be there. The Bible says, is there anything too hard for God? There's nothing. For with God, all things are possible. It didn't say a few things, something. It says, for with God, all things are possible. Lord, let us never forget that. Lord, I ask you to bless everybody yes. in this building today, yes. whatever needs they may have, yes. that you would meet every need yes. in the rich in Christ's glory, yes. that they will have testimonies upon testimonies yes. and be able to just point to you, yes. just point to you. Yes, yes. it was God. Yes. yes, it was God who did that. Nobody else could have done that but you. Yes. And Lord, we want to praise you. We want to give you the glory and in your wonderful holy name. We pray amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Well, you are dismissed and have a safe trip home. God bless you all. Thank you.